Welcome back to First Year in Medical Device Sales. I am your host, Jacob McLaughlin, and I'm so excited to be coming to you all today because I just love being able to help you guys out. I've been getting a lot of messages, and it's been great to see the adoption of just this podcast already in the YouTube of being able to help reps that are already in the field. We've already had people who've started implementing some of the podcasts that we've talked about with the research and then also what we've done to just turn territories around. And we've been getting awesome messages saying reps have been doing that, executing it and starting to get results already, seeing an uptick in their territories in such a small amount of time. So that's been absolutely amazing. And just wanna say welcome to everybody who is new here if you're a first time listener. This is first year in medical device sales. Who I am is my name is Jacob McLaughlin. I'm a regional sales manager for a med tech startup, but three years ago, I was a personal trainer. And so why I've made this podcast and who I am and why you should even listen to me is I was a personal trainer three years ago, wanted to break in, end up getting four job offers with top companies in the world, was able to land a position with Medtronic as a full line rep. I then took the lowest performing territory in the nation to top 10, finished number eight, where I got headhunted and was able to break in as a regional sales manager with a medtech startup, Innovus Medical. In under two years of experience, usually they want seven to 10. And with here, we've just made some very big, some deals. And I have to wait until we announce all that good stuff. Uh, but having fun, having success, being able to help others. And if you don't know me, I also have a new to medical device sales podcast where we've helped over 1200 people break into medical device sales in the last two years, two and a half years with and without sales experience. Um, so again, just showing you guys what's possible. Hopefully it's always an encouragement to you all. That's why I do this. Don't want anything from you. Hence why we put all the free content out there. I just want to help you as much as I can, because when I was trying to break in, it was always, Hey, it's a boys club. Hey, you need to have medical device sales experience, but if you don't have medical device sales experience. And then what I learned once I got into the industry is you have a lot of reps in the industry, but a lot of them aren't performing. And so then if you guys are coming in as an associate sales rep or you're a TM, but you don't have the guidance, the help, the coaching, somebody to actually mentor you, it can be really hard and challenging. Um, we've mentioned on here, go back and listen to other podcasts. You'll hear about my experience with uh, first starting with Medtronic and it, it was definitely a roller coaster. Um, it wasn't what they all say, Hey, come in, have this great training, someone to hold your hand, do all this stuff. It's, it's not that as you are all figuring out, it is sink or swim, fire hose and rock and roll. But wanting this to be as helpful as possible to you all. Again, all we're here is trying to provide value to you. Um, so you can be, if you're an associate sales rep, how to handle that associate sales rep role and, and progress into a full line rep role. Cause we've helped reps do that. Associates uh, progress and get promotions within eight months. Um, as you will hear in the industry, they always say two years. It's the no different than everybody tells me we can't get people to break in without sales experience and we do it every day. Um, so again, it goes back. If you know how to play the game, you can win the game. And that's what we continue to do here. So wanting to help you guys, if you are associates, be able to make that jump. And then if you are a rep already, how you can take a position and, and go higher. So the one thing I wanted to kind of talk about today, if you guys are reps, I wanted to kind of talk about a little bit of the different industry in there, and then also how to provide value once you are a rep. But why I want to start with this is I've talked to a lot of reps lately where for example, they're ortho reps and they're like, Hey, Jacob, I I've been an ortho for two years. I'm, I'm making about $110,000. Now, first off, congratulations. You're in the industry and ortho is not easy. Um, it is definitely a tough industry as you guys are all pretty sure you're all aware of. Um, but running trays, being in cases, a lot of times they need you there, right? There's that. But the conversation I had with this young man was, Hey, there's other positions that you can go work half the hours and make twice the amount of money. And he's like, that's not true. I talked to my, my mentor, AKA his regional sales manager who they're making money off of. You all know the good story, but he's like, this is the best. There's no grass is greener. And I'm like, well, then tell me why I know reps that are doing plastic surgery or like breast and they work 25 hours a week and they make 300 grand. And he's like, what? No, they don't. And I'm like, dude, you don't have to believe me. I'm like, I literally have nothing to gain. I'm not in plastics. I'm not selling for the companies. I'm just letting you guys know what's possible. So the reason I'm just telling you that is it comes from associates to full line. I got a question. Hey, Jacob. And, and we got this in our group, but Hey, Jacob, if I break in, in, you know, ortho, do I have to stay ortho the rest of my career? And, and the reality is you don't, right? If you're an associate sales rep role, role right now and you are in a certain division, you can transfer as a full line rep to another division. So like you can go for that promotion. As long as, again, you can show 
that you've had success as an associate, you've been able to set meetings, you can close some deals, you can run lunches, you can show what they're looking for. We talk about this all the time. Sales is sales is sales. Now, you need to learn specific things for each and every division. You need to be an expert and all that good stuff. Yes, an ortho sale is way different than a capital sale, right? But you can learn the process. That's all it. You just need to know the information and kind of what that looks like. But being able to learn sales and, and what that requires, it's all pretty much the same. And so what I just want you guys to understand is if you're in a division right now and you're like, oh my gosh, I, I talk to other reps. I just feel like I'm working all the time. I'm not making as much money that I should be. Just understand there are other divisions where you can make more and work less. But again, most, <laughs> most of the time, I'll just say this, a lot of the ortho reps I'll talk to, or they'll reach out to me. They'll be like, you're a liar. You don't know what you're talking about. And I'm like, okay. Like you don't have to listen. And again, this is you guys, just so you know, this is never brag. It's just to show you what's possible. It's like I did over north of 200 my first year. Well, I can promise you if I went in as ortho, I wouldn't have done that because I'm talking to reps that are doing 110, 120 K they're working way more than I was. And they are two, three years in, there are positions that are out there. You just have to be able to look. And, and again, how you do that is network. I tell people all the time when I broke into medical device sales, I networked more once I was in the industry than I was out of the industry because now I'm actually seeing these reps in person. Hey, what's your job like? What do you do? What do you sell? What's your, what kind of thing? And then if you make relationships with those reps, guess what you can actually kind of talk about finances, right? And you can kind of just see what's possible compared to so many times in the rep world. It's all egos. It's like, I'm not going to talk to anybody else. It's I'm the best there is, which is great. And I hope you are, but the reality is you're probably not. And there's probably someone better. And that's just life, right? It doesn't matter how good looking you are. There's probably someone taller, more fit and makes more money. Like that is just life, right? And that's, it. that's what we always just joke around, but it's no different than sales. Everyone has mentors. Like I have mentors. Like if you look at the millionaires, people who are making millions of dollars, they still have mentors because again, there's a difference between making a million and 10 million to a hundred million to a billion, right? And they each are, there's levels, no different than med device sales. If you're an associate to a full line rep, to a certain division of like, if you're making this much, there's, there's levels to it and just being able to learn what it is. So I just wanted to touch on that because I've got that question multiple times throughout the week of, Hey, where should I be going? Can it, once I get into ortho or for example, let's take out, if I get into urology, do I have to stay in urology my whole life? No, you don't have to right? There's, there's opportunities outside of it. So you just need to know the process. Uh, but again, just understand sales is sales is sales. And then I would just be networking so you can learn more about what opportunities are out there. But going back to, if you're an associate and you're in one and you're not really vibing with where you're at and you're not really enjoying where you're at again, first off, I'm going to tell you to stick it out for at least a year or two, right? Usually just at least a year, because then if you're doing the right things, like we're teaching on this and you're, you're keeping track of your numbers, then you can go on to the next level. And then you can be like, Hey, I, I could provide value at this different company. But so many times I'll get someone who reaches out there five months and they're like, I hate it. I can't do it. I think I'm going to quit. And I'm like, Hey, just stick it out for a year. Right. Because you can do anything for a year. And I, and I'll just tell you guys, like there was multiple times it wasn't enjoyable where I was at, at certain points, but that's the life. Like you just think about your life now. Like there's always going to be tough times. It doesn't matter if you're in a relationship or anything. It's not sunshine and rainbows all the time. You got to think about the bigger picture in mind. So if you know you want to do med device sales, well, they need to see at least a year. And then again, after a year, you can start or eight months or 10 months or whatever it is, then you can start applying and saying, Hey, I've been able to accomplish this. They're, they're taking a little longer and I know I can go make an impact. And this is a company I've actually researched and talked to. And I know that this is what I'm passionate about. And you can grow that aspect of it. And that's where you can make that transfer right away. Same thing. If you're a rep right now and you've been in for two or three years and you're like, I don't know if this is mine. I'm running all the way. I, I talk to reps that are literally working half the amount of hours and making more money on a base. This doesn't make any sense to me. What am I doing? Network with those people, reach out to people. There's always those opportunities. Now, again, that's not me saying ortho is bad because I know a lot of people who are in ortho absolutely love their life, make good money and have a great work-life balance as they build the teams and all that good stuff. It's just understand everybody's different because I, I say this all the time, especially with people breaking into medical device sales. Everyone always asks me, what's the best division? That's dependent, right? Because if you tell me I don't care about hours, I just want to make the most money. Well, that's a certain division. If you're like, Hey, Jacob, I need to make this, at least this much money, but I need a good work life balance. Well, that's this division Now I'm just going to tell you which company to go to, right? You just have to understand where you're going, but each person, cause I can say, Hey, if you work a hundred or you work 30 hours a week and make 150 grand, there's going to be some people who are like, that's amazing. That's what I want. There's going to be other people who's like, that sucks. 150 K is no money. And I need to be working. So everyone's different. So just understand that. Now to the second part of this and where really the value is coming in is 
how are you providing value to your accounts? So the reason I just wanted to come into this is because I just had a talk with actually a personal trainer because um, I, I still train people every once in a while, but I was just at the gym working out and I, I was talking to one of my buddies. He has his training business and he was like, hey man, tell me a little bit more about medical device sales. And then I, I know you teach people how to, to break in and what's that. Can you just give me more information? But then he was like, man, you're super smart because you're taking people that are already like trainers are hardworking, very disciplined, all that stuff. But sometimes they don't like to sell. Right. And so what we're just doing again, I don't only work with personal trainers. I work with everybody. But the conversation was, well, how have you had success in it? And I and I always say this and I've said it on new to medical device sales a million times. It's because. I never tried to be a medical device sales rep. And what I mean by that, I'm never here to try to make the sale, make the sale, come in and do all. I just always try to be a personal trainer. I'm trying to make a relationship with who I'm talking to, try to get to know who the scrub tech is. What, how long has the scrub tech been there, right? How, what makes them tick, right? What makes them excited? Getting to know people and getting the relationship because I hear this all the time. Relationship sales is dead. Like you can't do it. You can't win with relationship sales. Well, that's, that's true. You can't depend on just a relationship sale because guess what? If you suck at what you do and you're not good at what you do and you don't know any information and the doctor asks you four questions, you say, I'll get back to you. The doctor's like, why do we even use you? You don't even know what you sell. You have to be an expert in your spot. So if you can be an expert, you're going to provide the value and they're going to want to use you. But then if you can just be a good human being, get to know them, read the room, see where you can go. And you can do that. People want to buy from people they want or like they like. People want to be around people they enjoy, that actually enjoy them, right? And so many times reps and people want to come in and tell them how great their product is and all this good stuff instead of what I did to have success in my territory was just get to know the people in the room because the, the biggest thing that people miss is when I walked out of the room, one of the coolest moments, let me tell you this quick story. is like one of the coolest moments is I left a room and I came back about three minutes later because I forgot something, so I grabbed it. And when I walked in, it was the nurses giving me compliments to each other about how great I was. And I walked in on it and they're like, oh, we were just talking about you. The reason I'm telling you that is that's not like, oh, feel good, Jacob, all that. It's to tell you when you can go and care about other people, you're not pushing your products all the time and you're just getting to know people. You're an absolute resource inside the OR room and that you can actually help the cases and then you're making their life easier. They appreciate that. And guess who they sell to? The doctors that th you can't get in front of because they work with them all the time. It's, they're gonna be talking about you when you're not in the room and that's the whole goal of sales. How can you be making influence? How can you be talking to people? How can you get touch points when you're not there? And it's by caring about the people you're there. And so that's the biggest thing I need to get across to you guys that especially if you're new reps, every single time, when even now when we get people in the course that break in, first six months, I'm gonna go make this sale, I'm gonna do that. And why I can say that, that was me. Oh, I'm gonna go do this sale. And then you realize you don't know what you're doing. You don't know who you're talking to, all that good stuff. And you just realize, hey, I'm just going to go get to know my accounts. I'm going to go get to know the relationships of the OR director, my my specialty head, right? Like I was doing GYN, I would go talk to the GYN directors of the OR, right? That's who's going to be, I'm going to be working with. Get to know them, make a relationship with them. Guess what? When they reached out to me, could I throw them a bone and help them out? I always did. If I could, right? Because you're building those relationships. And again, if you help them out, they'll help you out. And the one, well, my biggest account that I had, when I first got there, my competitor was like the front runner by a long shot. It wasn't even close. But over the year I was there, it was continuing almost two years. Is I just continued to wear it down of showing up. I was always reliable. I always showed that I was going to follow through. I made it to every case. I was always a resource. I always was polite. I always, like, again, I always joke around. It's be the golden retriever that's shaking your butt. When you have a scrub tech or somebody who's mean to you, you just blow it off. Because otherwise you're going to become really like, again, you don't want to become that jerk of a rep. And I'm going to be sitting here and tell you guys, I've been there. It's pretty, it's pretty easy to go become like, I'm all that when you're running 133% to plan, you still got a couple months, you're crushing it, you're making big deals and you're like, oh my gosh, right? But then you become a jerk and nobody likes you and, and you'll see it in a reflection of your territory. I've lived it, I've done it. And that's where I had to have the resets and be like, no. You're here to provide value. Who cares about it? Because the more value you provide, the more patients you're helping, the more value you provide in the OR room, the more you'll smash quota, the more money you'll make because they want to be around you. And so that's what I wanted to get across today is make sure when you're in the OR room, when you're with an account, when you're with a surgery scheduler, when you're doing a lunch, that you're just trying to provide value and get to know the person on the other side. Because it's like we talked about. If you can learn who the person is on the other side that you're talking to, you can learn how to sell to them. Because guess what? 
if you talk to a doctor and they tell you that they really care about patient outcome or they care about the staff being able to set it up super easy or they qu care about the quickness of it or they care about the price of it, whatever it is, they're going to be telling you and you're going to be asking good probing questions to learn that. And then guess what? Now you know what to focus on because early in my career, I made the mistakes of saying, hey, you know, we're, we're more affordable. We have all this. And when we were and we had all the, the data to prove all the good stuff, but I would be spending time about we, we were in Arizona where it's a lot of split share and it's a lot of private. So m money is a big thing for them in reimbursement. I'd be spending about that. And then I'd be talking to a doctor who's like, Jacob, I really don't care. I'm working for the hospital. I'm here for patient outcome. And why is this better? Well, then I just wasted five minutes of my time. And then also now it just looks like I'm trying to sell to them, right? Compared to, okay, hey, what do, what do you look for? Why, why do you use what you use now? Did you use it because you used it in residency program or, or in residence, or did you get used or did you get another rep to, to transfer from what you did? And like I always said, what'd you use in residency? And then they're going to tell you, and then now you can figure out what they're using because they're either still using that product or not. And then it'll be like, oh, what made you make the change? They'll tell you a lot of times when they made that change, there was a reason of they thought it was better. They were open to it. Well, that's great because, hey, doc, because if you're open to that, wait till you're open to this and what we can do and blah, 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 blah. Right. But if they're like, oh, you're just using what you did in residency. Well, have you ever have you ever considered this? And if they're like, no, it works. I'm not doing that. That's when you can come back and be like, well, you also used to use a BlackBerry at one point. Now we use iPhones, right? Like, they're, like there's a bunch of different things you can always combat those, but you're getting to know who your person is. You're understanding what you need to say to them to sell to them and being able to just close it. And again, I always tell you guys in the first meeting when I was meeting with somebody, I'm not trying to close them. I'm not trying to get the commitment. All I'm trying to get is commitment to, are you open to doing a surgery with us? Would you? And I always was just like, let's compare apples to apples, right? And then go schedule three, five surgeries because then you just make sure that they you can manage the expectations. Hey, doc, the first time you rode a bike, it probably took a couple times. You probably fell a couple times, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay, great. Just like when you come and use our product, it's not going to be like you grab and go first time because if you were used to like for me, it was like, oh, I'm used to doing stuff on the right hand side and now you have me using a foot pedal. Well, this is this is more difficult. It's, it's not more difficult. It's just taking some time to learn it. So you get the stuff scheduled. And then when you're in the OR before the case, you're going to manage expectations. You're going to show them, like I would show them a video of, hey, this is what to expect. This is where we're different. This is what we told you about. This is what you're going to see. I will walk you through everything. I just need you to just kind of maybe go a little slower than you, you're used to so I can actually make it make sense. Because all of my cases were the ones when the doctors were like, I already know it. Bam, bam. They're shoving it in. It's not working because they're not listening. I'm like, hey, drop the wrist. And they're lifting the wrist up. Yeah, it's not going in. you know. And so that's what I would just tell you guys is if you can continue to do that and you'll learn who you're selling to and you have those conversations, you can manage those expectations. You can learn what actually makes them tick. What's going to make them excited about going into using your product. And then... It, it all goes back to if you're providing value, then you can get the staff to like you. You can show that you follow through. You say you're going to be at a case, you'll be at the case. You say you're going to email, you follow up with an email, all the above. Then it just continues to show that you are who you say you are. And again, it's always about your reputation. So don't be that rep who says you're going to do something and don't. Always be the rep who follows through. But I wanted to just focus on you guys. Again, being a personal trainer, it was, hey, how's your day going? Hey, how's life going? What's going on in your life right now? Hey, if it's a new new client, hey, tell me a little bit about yourself. It was just building relationships. That's why I've been so successful in medical device sales. It has nothing to do with sales or any of It's just I'm trying to build relationships with the people I'm with. And then again, they'll be like, relationships don't make deals. Well, I would caveat that is what happens if you are great at relationships, you can build that, but you're still an expert in what you do. I studied it. I knew my products like they're supposed to be known. I knew the competitor's product. I knew where we were different. But what I never did was put the other product down. I never said, hey, this is horrible. I would just say, hey, this is what we do. Can you see the difference here? Oh, yeah. Hey, doc, you know, when you do this with their product, this is actually what you don't have to do that step. Oh, really? Right. Because I just knew what, who I was selling against. It's not talking bad about them because we, we had talked about this, I think before, but I had a post go viral on LinkedIn because it talked about, I converted a doc and the doctor talked about, you know, when your competitors here, all they do is talk trash about you and your, your product, but you've never once I've worked with you four times and you never once brought them up. You just bring up your product and talk about the patient and how it's getting a better outcome. 
that she converted to us. She started using us. That was a doctor I won by, again, not comparing to the competition of all this. It was, hey, do you see this difference? Does this help you? Is this more efficient? Especially when she was more clinical. And just being able to provide that value, but being an expert on what you sell, because there was like, we would sell a device. Hey, sometimes if you couldn't go in and it was a, a retroverted uterus, Hey, you need to flip it upside down or something goes on, right? You knowing that. And then this slides right in and they're like, Oh my gosh, like that's literally what got me with my top doc was knowing that product. They were struggling. I said, Hey, just try this. Did it slid right in. She's like, Oh my gosh. Like I've been struggling with this forever. You just saved my life. That was the moment the relationship changed because I, the first three months up to that, she just thought I was a nice guy. But then I actually showed that I could be an asset and provide value inside the OR room to make her cases go well. And that's what I would tell you guys to focus on is when you're in the OR room, make sure you're talking about, or not talking about, but you're just providing value. And that may be not talking. But like, I just will tell you guys, each doctor, each person you deal with is going to be different. Yes. There's sometimes you go in and they don't want to talk to you. They don't want anything to do with you. And they're there to do a business. That's great. Like then you step off, but then there's other people that want to know you. Right. And I always just tell people, if I was known as Jacob, the rep, I failed because this is when I, it went to where I was going, but like, I have a dog. I knew I was winning when I'd walk in. They're like, Hey, how's your dog doing? Hey, you know, they, of course that everyone follows people on social media. Hey, I saw you went hiking this week and tell me about it. Hey, what are you doing this? They started acting like I was a friend and it's start, starting to help me. And then I would start getting DMS or text messages. Hey, this doc's going to be here on this day. You should show up. Hey, I just let you know, this case went really bad with your competitor. You should know that you should go talk to this doctor now. Like they literally will give you what you need and the ammunition to be successful. If you can make those relationships show that you care about them and you're not there for the money. That is the last thing I just have to say, because there's too many reps. I hear about it. I used to be the guy, talk about money, talk about how much you can make all the good stuff. You're going to be this egotistical, whatever it is, throw it out the, uh, Ben, just focus on providing value. Just focus on helping your accounts, providing the best possible service so you have the best patient outcome. And I promise you, you will be, the, the, the finances will come. Like you will be reimbursed more than you can imagine. You will hit your quotas. It will help. So hopefully this was helpful. You guys can reach out to us on first year in medical device sales. We are on the social media platforms, new to medical device sales, but also Jacob McLaughlin on LinkedIn. Always love connecting with you guys. Always happy to help you guys again, just wanting and girls. Um, but I want you guys to know that I'm just here to help you. I want you all to be successful. I want you all to win. I want to be able to share my experience. So hopefully you can learn faster, have faster success and, and continue to promote and, and crush it in this industry. We are going to be having, we have several guests lined up to, so you can hear their experience, how they did it in medical device sales, where they went from associates to full line reps in, in a quick time, how they've crushed it at some of the largest companies in the world. Some of the things, and I can't wait to actually just kind of talk about some rep stories because it's going to be fun because we all know that we all go through things. But I just want to say thank you so much for taking time. If you can press that like and subscribe button, a five-star review helps us grow this channel. And if you can share this with other people, it means the world because again, we're just trying to provide as much value as you can. Um, if you, if you want to share it on LinkedIn, that would be amazing. But again, always happy to connect at Jacob McLaughlin. I hope you all have an amazing week. Keep getting after it. I'll see you on the next one. Peace.